when it comes to fresh expressions, small is beautiful. You can start very, very small. And certainly some of our most successful projects have started literally with one person who's had a passion for their particular context um, and then seeing that, that grow very, very quickly. So I've, I've got increasing confidence now to go to a very small, struggling church and being able to spot where the fresh expression potential may be. But equally, I think, on the other hand, this is an incredible challenge to larger churches and almost the larger and outwardly more successful that the church may be, the bigger the challenge. Because, of course, the temptation is to think, if you have a full church, we don't need this. I think the first step that you need to take in starting a fresh expression is, has to be prayer. It has to be giving a long time to reflecting upon the scriptures, to praying together, praying as individuals, just really seeking God's wisdom and, and the Spirit's guidance as, as you start something like this. So I think that has to be the starting point. I think when you start uh, a fresh expression, the most important thing probably is what is the vision of this church and are the people that you want to be part of that sharing that vision. Uh, that vision needs to be worked out with others, but it does need to be clear uh, so that people coming in really know what this church is about, uh, who are the kind of people that the church is trying to reach, what kind of style of church it's going to be. Uh, all those questions are, are vital. Ask God to show you who are the people uh, that he wants you to reach and give you both a vision and a calling for that. I think then the next priority is to call a team to you, uh, people who are going to follow you and therefore probably get on with you. Don't, at this point, call the most difficult people, but make sure that there's a variety of people in your team. Practically, you know, where something's starting, I think there are certain things that can help it. One is if um, the people doing that have a, a set of relationships, um, people to accompany them on the journey, I suppose, where they can talk about what they're doing, share ideas, share struggles and pains. And from a practical point of view, support from a church or a network of church relationships that's kind of encouraging and helping them on that journey. I mean, I think they're, they're, those are pretty basic things, but actually they can make an awful lot of difference, I think. There's a quite important distinction, I think, between fantasy and vision. Um, fantasy, I think, is when you have a, an idea about the future, but you don't really want to share it with anybody else because you think they might just laugh or, or, or just be crazy and think you're stupid. And, and it's, it's something that, that is slightly outlandish. You just keep it to yourself. You don't share it with anybody else. Um, or when you do share it with someone else, they just say, just forget it. Um, but then there's vision, which I think is something which you are passionate about, but you do want to share with other people. And when you share it with other people, they say, yeah, that's, 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 that could be right. That really could be the right thing. I have been rereading uh, recently the letters sent by Pope Gregory to Augustine when he sent him to bring the gospel to England again uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Uh, and Gregory has a very wise piece of advice to Augustine that if you're going to climb a mountain, it's many small steps, not one great leap. And I think in developing fresh expressions of church, you need to be prepared for a journey, a journey like the Exodus in the Old Testament, where different things come into place at different stages and you're looking for gradual growth and development. You need a leader who, first of all, is comfortable with and good at teamwork. That means comfortable with letting other people develop their gifts and skills, not threatened by the fact that you're not the great leader in charge of everything with all the truth and all the answers and all the authority. So relationship skills are vital. But you do have to be a strong leader because things can get out of hand, things can go pear-shaped very quickly. Is the starting point thinking, well, the sort of worship we have in our church is really good for me, but my neighbours actually wouldn't respond to that. What sort of worship would they respond to and how can we do that? Do we have a group of people who might put on that sort of worship event to which I can invite these people with more confidence than I might to a traditional Sunday service? But perhaps the approach isn't through worship. It's more a question of there's a real need in the community. Let's just get alongside people and share our resources to help meet their need so that we're demonstrating the love of Jesus in, in all sorts of practical ways. Music